Kid, seriously. Welcome to another rip roaring episode of the Kid Seriously Show, the only podcast around that always pays full price for our college education, even if it takes us an extra few years. Every now and again, we get together to discuss the world. We're going to play our famous trivia question game show. Discuss other things from her land that tickle our fancy, and once in a while, we might even review a trailer. To my left, it's everyone's favorite geography major. It's Luke Neitzel, and me, it's the milk jug himself. I'm Maya Madrid. Luke, how are you? Good, and it's not just a geography degree, but it's also American Indian Studies minor. So, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. You just wouldn't imagine all the jobs that were beating down my door to hire me when I graduated with that. It was, you know. Oh, I felt like the prettiest girl at the dance. You know, it's been a long ride for you, but I, uh, I think you've done okay for yourself. So. I'm happy with where I am. I- I'm here with you. How? What else could I want? Exactly. Nothing. You want for nothing. Yeah, it was 311 Day not too long ago. We've had an Aquaman movie. I'm not sure what else you want in life. Well, I got bad news. I'm moving like three hours away from you. That is true, but yeah, that's, that's okay. That's it's good for you. It's good for the family, so. That's true. I'm looking at real estate. The housing prices are dirt cheap where I'm moving, so nice. That's good news, and um, yeah, just hanging out. What'd you do this week? Tell me something exciting. What did I do this weekend? I didn't have a ton of youth sports, which was amazing for the first time in I don't know six months. And um, but it was my my little guy's birthday. He turned nine, so we we had the in laws over for a party, and it was during the Badger basketball game. So I had to sneak another TV into the living room, the tiny little TV, so I could I could watch the fire lose at the same time because it it wouldn't be a proper spring weekend if I didn't watch the fire get get pummeled like they they love to do. But uh, it, was, it was still a good time. He was happy. He got lots of. Lots of lots of fun presents that he wanted, so it's always a good time. What about what about you? Not much, man. I was with Boom on Saturday. Uh, Lady Madrid had her activity that she was at the whole time, so that was kind of cool. And then on Sunday, I had a ton of work to catch up on, so I just basically did that. Watched some AA of football, which we'll talk about on another show. And uh, my Birmingham Iron improved to four, second best record in the league. So excited about that. Hey, let's get right to everyone's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? In true American style, our contestant's going to offer up his earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact or immediately mocked by our moderator. Here's how the one-player version of our game works. Seven questions. Player wins if he gets four or apparently some other number, depending on who the moderator is. Singles match tonight. I ask the questions, and Luke, you're going to do the answer. How's that for you, buddy? I'm ready. It's been a while since I've had to do the answer, and so I'm a little nervous. I'm going to be rusty. It was controversial last time uh, Last time that uh, we, we went down, last time you competed, so I'd rather not talk about that, and we're going to get just right to it. Nice. Luke, Aunt Becky and that desperate housewife just got busted for sending their kids to USC. It's so surprising how rich folks try to game the system to make up for their children's inadequacies. I'm sure your time as a soccer coach has hinted at this. Let's bring it back to the important thing here. Let's bring it back to USC, which has been one embarrassing thing after another for like the last decade of my life as my favorite university that's not Wisconsin. Luke, tell us, what's the most embarrassing thing one of your favorite teams has been a part of? Oh, that didn't even take me a while to do it. It's the the Vikings love boat scandal. That was pretty ridiculous i mean i suppose it made for good headlines but when you're already kind of the the, i mean thank god for the lions otherwise we'd always be the punching bag of the division because we never went on the field and we we choke magnificently but then you know there was you know i'm not even going to make the amount of jokes i could make and puns or whatnot but the whole getting busted sex boat cruise with half the team and especially too because there was i was working for the vikings radio network at the time so there were some players that it's not like they were it's not like they could probably identify me out of a crowd, but like I hung out with them a couple times and got to know them, and a couple of them were were busted in it. So it was one of whom, you know, I'm, I spent time with his baby and fiance and stuff like that. So it was just the whole thing was just real, real embarrassing. More more embarrassing than what they normally do to us on the field. Are you going to name names here on a kid seriously exclusive on who you're talking about? Are you going to get specific here? Uh, well, I, I will just say he was a running back. Who was cited? He was one of the few players who was physically who was actually cited by police for conduct on the boat. 
So, okay. so I, that, that I'll leave that to your, your own Googling. Excellent. So bring us right up to it and then pull away. That's classic. Man, there's you you're doing the puns all on your own there. As pulling out is something that you are accustomed to, um, you also pulled out a victory on this particular point. It is the sex boat. That is the most embarrassing thing that you have been a part of. So I, I tried to look through your – try to think of anything that would have been close. I can't. I, there, there's some other ones. There, like The fire decided to build their whole team around Sean Maloney, who was a tremendous <laughs> bust. And, then, and, and the reason he couldn't adjust was because he was too sleepy with the time change from coming from Europe after being here for six months to be good at soccer. I mean, that was pretty embarrassing. You, there's, there's been players like that, just like busts or whatever, but just an actual making total asses of themselves in a way that you can also kind of laugh at too. Cause you know, there's other, you know, like it's not funny what Adrian Peterson did or whatever, you know, like, but the, the, the love boat thing is something you can, you can mock and make fun of. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't really remember exactly a lot of the specifics. That would be fun. Maybe I'll spend an hour and Google that for for a good time. But speaking of a good time, Luke, Beto O'Rourke has announced his candidacy for the Democratic nomination for the President of the United States, joining a field of roughly 123,000. Months ago, you picked Joe Biden as your pick to be the guy to run against Trump. Who you got? Biden, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, or some other person? Um, geez. I mean, I, you, you asked me who I thought would run. That was my, that was more my well, pick. As, win, or, yeah, but, win. but yeah, but not, not who like I was picking as who I would want to be necessarily. And, um, you know, I, I, I know our work's flashy right now, but I don't know if that's going to last. I don't, I don't believe Bernie Sanders is ever going to be able to, to make the push. I, I think Democrats will end up trying to go with something safe. And again, I think that points back to Biden. So I, you know, I, I don't think it's an inspired choice. I haven't sat down and thoroughly gone through them all. So I'm not sure who I would vote for necessarily when it comes to the actual primary. But again, if you're asking me who I think it's going to be, I, I'm still going to go Biden. I know he slipped up the other day and kind of said he, he was running, even though he hasn't announced. So yeah, I, I guess I'll just stick with that. So months ago, my pick was Biden, and it was kind of the, well, this is kind of the best of what's around. However, that has changed, and here are the reasons that has changed. Classically speaking, and I know this wasn't the case the most recent, like, the most recent time, but classically speaking, the GOP kind of picks whoever's turn it is with McCain, Bob Dole, George W. Bush, that sort of thing. Um, with the Democrats, they usually pick the person who can win. Now, this didn't happen in 2016. But when you look at Beto O'Rourke, uh, he gives a chance to win Texas. And if the Democrats win Texas, the game is over right then and there. Um, he has been elected but hasn't had a long track record, similar to other candidates that have won, uh, like Clinton and Obama in the past for that party. So I'm going to go O'Rourke here. That's the person who gives uh, the, the best chance to win the nomination. Also rose uh, $6 million in one day. Well, so. and, he, and and he's apparently at Culver's yesterday in in Milwaukee. So Was he? Yeah, he's been in Wisconsin a couple times because we're obviously a big swing state that people want to, the, the Democrats want to win back. So he's he's been here campaigning twice already. So there's a bunch of pictures of him at Culver's yesterday. Hey, I can't, can't blame a guy for going to Culver's, I'll tell you that much. For sure. So it's one-to-one, although that was there's no harm in that answer. You didn't get the point, but it's not an embarrassing answer. It's probably number two. But Luke, there hasn't been a Star Wars movie in almost a year now. You were hoping that it would reinvigorate your excitement for the realm. How's it working out for you? Oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not interested at all right now. Like I'm not, I, I know there we're close to a star Wars celebration, which is only about 90 miles from here in Chicago, uh, in a couple of weeks where I'm sure we're going to get a trailer or at least a teaser. And we're going to get the name announcement and all that stuff. And I don't really have any anticipation at this point at all. And, you know, you may, you may go, well, you know, I'm not a guy who loved what J.J. Abrams did in the first one or even really likes what he did in the first one. So going back to him isn't necessarily something that excited me when it was announced. But I also thought back and at this time when 
Last Jedi, we were waiting for stuff on Last Jedi to come out. I also wasn't excited. I was kind of like, yeah, it's fine. I'm not that super pumped. And then they started showing us stuff and I got excited. So I kind of feel like right now I have no anticipation for it. I'm not that excited for it. But as we get closer and they start showing us stuff, I'm guessing it's going to build. Um, But I don't, it's certainly not going to be the excitement I think all of us had for Force Awakens because it had been so long before we had one. Definitely not for Phantom Menace which I had a ton of excitement for because that was the first one to be released where I could actually go see it in the theater. So it it's it's down. I don't really know where they, they go from here. Um, it sounds like they're ending the Skywalker franchise, which I think is, or Saga or whatever, which I think is a good way to go about it. But yeah, I'm, I'm not super pumped at this stage. That is the correct answer, is that it's kind of lame and it's kind of just off-putting. And I think maybe you could make the argument that that's a good thing, that we needed this break and that the end payoff of excitement will be more because of the doldrums that we have now. But regardless of how you feel, you got the right answer. It's kind of lame and underwhelming at this point. To you, two to one. And now we're moving into your favorite sport. We're going to the NBA. Nice. So. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, international hero, and all-around good guy, went off for 52 last night, but they lost to Philly. How far did them Bucks go this year? They're 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 taking it down. They're gonna do it. It's it's an easier path. Obviously, they have a very. I mean, no, they lost to the Sixers, but they have a very good record against the big teams in the East. Uh, they've won the series against the Raptors, who are the second best team in the East. They won a series against some of the other teams out there. Like they've they've got, I think, what it takes to make a big long run. I think the West is gonna beat up on each other a little bit more. I know on paper everyone's gonna say Warriors, 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 and it probably should be that way until someone knocks them off. But you know what? Why why not us? Why can't the Bucks do it? I mean, you know, they they got everything rolling for them, and you know what? Fear the deer, baby. Fear the deer. I'm all in. All right, three to one. I said, calling it now. They upset the Warriors. That's we, we're on the same wavelength. Because you know what? If we're wrong, screw it. Who cares? Let's exactly. Go all in. I'm going Friday, so I'm uh I'm looking forward to getting back there. That's we uh we convinced our our son. We gave him the option, uh, but we were like, you could have a party with your friends, or I could take you to a Bucks game or a Brewers game or something. And he was like, give me Bucks tickets instead. So not only do I not have to deal with the stress of a little kid birthday party, I get to go uh, go watch Giannis and the boys with my kiddo. That's awesome. Yeah. Have fun with that game. I love that stadium so much. And I love that team so much. It's been so fun to watch this year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Speaking of fun to watch, Stephen Malcolmus and the Jigs just came out with a new album. In 15 seconds or less, name one of their songs not off their first album. Pass. All right. So uh, I figured that that might be the case. I knew you were going to go Jenny and the S-Dog. Well, that's your Black Book is actually what popped into my head at first. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah. also a good song. But both I, I, loved that, I loved that whole first album, but yeah, I don't think I even heard the second one. You missed out because their second album and then Real Emotional Trash is phenomenal. But, nice. Uh, so three to two. You've got two chances here. You're usually good at draining one of these three. And we go to a Vikings question right away. So... Um, this might be a little skewed because it's my view of the Vikings from okay. your perspective. So uh, keep that in mind as you answer here question six. Now, the NFL free agency is in full swing. What is the number one position the Vikings need this offseason, whether by a free agency or by the draft? Well, it, I mean, it's 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 O-line. You know, they, they, need, they need everything on the O-line. I mean, the, you, p- people want to bag on – cousins and he certainly had turnovers and things like that but when you're getting your lines getting run through like immediately um you know that that's <laughs> that's going to cause interceptions and turnovers um even if Barr hadn't resigned uh our defense is strong enough that I think they would have been less pertinent than fixing that o-line so do I have to pick a specific position off the o-line or does o-line count as an answer the rule on this is that you have to name exactly what it is to get the point and I have offensive line i would have taken just offensive line or specific uh specific positions if you nice. needed it you did not need that to get the point congratulations you have one four to two Woo! Woo. now before we play the music here would you like to answer number seven obviously 
Right. So, I gotta, you know, I wanna, I wanna try and, I wanna try and run it up, just like the Bucks are gonna do on Golden State in the finals. There you go. So four nothing. Are you calling sweep? Sweep, sweep. And I, I told my kids that uh, we will do everything in our power to try and make a finals game if possible. But well, that would be unreal. Yeah. I hope you get a chance to do that. Me too. I will. Uh, I'll probably be gone by then. So, um, speaking of gone by then, the NHL season <laughs> is coming to a close. And the Wild are in a knockdown, drag out fight for that final spot, man. Luke, it might be a little premature, but I'm going to look ahead to the offseason. Tell me the one person on the planet, and I actually have two listed, but tell me the one person on the planet who the Wild could realistically get and build this project around. Well, okay, so, I, I mean, the, the project's going to be built around, I, I think, the guys they – they traded for. I, I have a guess what your answer is, though it's probably not realistic because it sounds like it's a done deal that he's going to Florida. Because I'm going to guess the answer on paper is probably uh, Panarin, the bread yeah. man, who, um, you know, is a, a big scoring, you know, free agent winger with Chicago, then traded to Columbus, has been good there. Sounds like him and Bobrovsky have both basically already decided they're going to go together to Florida. He would be a great piece to build around, but I just realistically don't think they can get him. So I am going to give a different answer since I'm not, I already won at this stage, and I am going to go with another forward, but one with local ties, which in Minnesota means more than anything in the world, which usually ends up to burn us a little. But it is from one of the best teams, I think the second best team right now, maybe third best team right now in the East, that is the surprise New York Islanders, and Edina High School graduate Anders Lee, who is the captain of this Islanders team now that Tavares is gone. He is going to be a free agent. I think that's the guy you try to lure home. Uh, he'll be more affordable than Panarin, and he would fit in well. He'd fit in with some of these other young guys that we brought in, um, but also be in that middle range where he's not super old like Stahl and whatnot. So he he's the guy I realistically kind of hope they they target. That's good. Well, you guessed the right answer. One of the two answers that I had was Panarin. I have, and I quote, Panarin or that Russian dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the, the prospect. Have, he, you know. two, 2020. That, that's when he's hopefully. Coming. Yeah. Yep. He's going to do another year in the KHL and then then he should be coming over. And it sounds like he is. Pl- I mean, he's hired an English tutor. He follows all the wild on social media or whatever. I mean, obviously nothing's a done deal, but it sounds like he is on track to think that he wants to come and be here. So everything looks good, but we just got another year to wait. But, you know, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. They have a really tough schedule. They're a point out right now. People may not agree with what the new GM has done. I certainly think there have been some some bad trades. Nino for Rask obviously has looked pretty bad, but I get why he's excited about Fiala. Donato has already earned his stripes, especially for Charlie Coyle. Uh, we're going to get Dumba back. We're going to get Koivu back. Jared Spurgeon continues to just blow my mind with how great he is. He's the best player on the team this year, I think, without a doubt. Um, so I, I, I think there are reasons to be optimistic, though. Um, we're, a, we're a ways away from being a, a true a true powerhouse, but I, I like some of the things we're doing. Yeah, I think we uh, we played better this year than either you or I thought. No, it's been up or down. It's been real. There have been some highs and there have been some real lows. But I don't think either of us thought we'd be here. I think we both thought the team would be dismantled by this point and we'd be mailing it in. So, Well, you know, the, the thing is, is they were kind of dismantled, but they've still been able to hang around. Um, and they, yeah. they're able to do it with some younger, younger guys and, again, without... Koivu, who's chronically underrated, especially by the fans in Minnesota, for how good a two-way centerman he is, shutting down the top lines of the other teams, and also how key he is on face-offs, because we suck at face-offs without him. And then, I mean, Dumba was on pace for a historic scoring season for defensemen. Now, Spurgeon may actually eclipse the goal record anyway. He's only three away from uh, tying the all-time defensive single-season goal record. But, you know, we get we get some of these guys back. There's there's things to be happy about. Well, I got one more thing to be happy about. Make it two. The first thing is you're about to hear your music. The second thing is that's the end of the episode. Luke, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Luke underscore Neitzel, N-E-I-T-Z-E-L. Mark, who will be rejoining us in about a month, is Mark underscore Neitzel 23. 
and I'm at Maya Madrid. Together we're Kids Seriously, and we are out. Bye. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at kidsseriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.